It is World Series time, and it's a study of contrasts. Both the Rangers and Diamondbacks are coming back from 100 loss seasons only two years ago, but they rebuilt in very different ways. We've chronicled the Rangers' road back already. Today, let's focus on Arizona and an unorthodox rebuild. Let's do a little digging in. Let's start with this. Financially, this is David V. Goliath. The Rangers are ninth in payroll and moving up. The Diamondbacks are 21st, 21 out of the 30 teams. We don't normally label them small market. They're not at the bottom performing magic tricks like the Rays and the Orioles. But go in realizing the Rangers have almost 80 million more dollars in payroll than Arizona. Take a look at the highest paid players on each team. The Rangers, there they are, the Rangers have three guys over 25 million. And next year, they're going to be spending 22.5 on Max Scherzer. Not this year, but next year. The Diamondbacks don't have anybody over 20 million. No aircraft carriers. That's what we call 20 million and up. The Rangers have seven guys over 15 million a year. Arizona, the only player over 15 million a year is Madison Bumgarner, who's been cut. So to the Rangers' credit, I want to point this out, like big money, but they do more than spend. They've done very well in trades and development, but the Diamondbacks do it a bit differently. Most clubs trade older stars for prospects, and those prospects emerge years later. The Diamondbacks have made trades at the major league level. Old school, kind of straight up, challenge trades. The big one was right there, early for new GM Mike Hazen, just one month into his tenure in 2016, traded for Cattell Marte and pitcher Taiwan Walker. Marte is arguably their best player. Had a monstrous seven-win season in 2019 and a five-win season this year. Here's the full trade. Marte has been a mainstay for five years now. Walker had one good year for them and then was injured. They gave up Mitch Hanniger, who gave Seattle two very good seasons, but also had injury problems. Gene Segura, who the Mariners eventually flipped for J.P. Crawford, he went as well. But Marte has been the most productive player in this deal. This is a win for Arizona. All right, challenge trade number two, a straight-up deal. Zach Gallen for Jazz Chisholm. As far as who's winning this one, it's bounced back and forth. But as of now, the Diamondbacks have gotten five years and 631 innings out of Gallen with a 3 2 1 ERA. That's an ERA plus of 131, 31% better than league average. Chisholm is potentially an impact player from Miami, two years younger than Gallen. But he's hit at an OPS plus of 103. That's only 3% better than league average. So let's spell it out. This is a big one. Take a look at the numbers here. Oh, well, the numbers aren't there. But the numbers are out there. I'll bottom line it. Gallon has contributed 17 war for Arizona. Chisholm has added just six war for Miami. Chisholm's two years younger, so it's a bit unfair. I get it. But he's been hurt a lot. Gallon has not. And Gallon has just come up for the Marlins, so they knew he was major league ready while Chisholm was in double A. That's the part of the trade that stunned me. You have a blue chip pitcher just arriving in the majors. He's had instant success. You do not trade that guy. This is another win for Arizona. We spoke to Mike Hayes in the GM back in May. Here's his thinking on the deal. Look, Jazz is an incredible player. He is so talented. He brings such an energy to the game. Um, and, and so is Zach. And, and look, both teams, you know, the Marlins have done a great job with pitching, and they needed a position player, and, and we needed a pitcher. And, and, and both, I think both, both teams probably benefited from that trade tremendously. And here's one more done this past offseason. Arizona sending Dalton Varsho, a defensive standout to Toronto, getting back Lourdes Gurriel and catcher Gabriel Moreno. Varsho didn't hit much for the Blue Jays, but with his fielding, played 158 games too. He had a four win season. That's a good year. But the emergence of Moreno gave the Diamondbacks two starters, two starting position players in this deal. Guriel had a 108 OPS plus playing the outfield. That's a four win season. Moreno played 111 games, had a war of 4.3. You, you don't pick up a starting catcher and a left fielder for a team with a low payroll. That's another win for Mike Hazen and the Diamondbacks. Here he is again. We didn't have long term, long term solution to catcher. That was obviously of value to us too. Uh, we had a lot of left handed hitting outfielder. Those were the main reasons why we made the trade. Those are big trades, big wins, and that's before you even get to the trade deadline deals this year. Paul Seawald and Tommy Pham. They only won 84 games. They barely got in. They probably do not get in without those two players. So Arizona has gotten here in very different ways from most clubs. Their one big free agent, Madison Bumgarner, did not work out. Good drafting has just begun to kick in. That's Corbin Carroll, Brandon Fought, Alec Thomas, Jordan Lawler. But most of them, you see where they get their war? 15.8 from trade. Most of it is from trades. And again, I think it's interesting. Challenge trades. That's eye-opening. And that has helped propel them to the World Series.